Hi, good afternoon everybody. Uh, I'm Cody Fiol. And I'm Abdullah Sar. And we're going to talk to you today about pedal curves. A uh, pedal curve is a curve created by, uh, by the orthogonal projection of a fixed point on a tangent line uh, for the given curve. Uh, here's a few examples. Uh, the two main ones we'll be focusing on are, are these two. One of them is cardioid. Um, some history about the Limousin is that the person that conducted the earliest formal research was uh, Blaise Pascal's son, uh, which I found very interesting. Um, math must run in the family. Uh, and the curve was named by uh, Gills Roberval in uh, 1650. Um, this curve comes from a Latin name uh, that means snail because of its spiral uh, that it can poss that it can make. And Durer, I, I don't know if I pronounced that not correct or not, um, but he should be actually the one given credit for the curve uh, because he originally drew it uh, back in 1525. Here uh, we're going to talk. I'm going to talk to you about uh, three mathemati mathematicians that worked on the curve. Uh, the first one is Pascal. Uh, he's a tax official, lawyer, and a member of the uh, Petite Noblesse, which is a... It's, it's kind like of a, upper like class. A, upper a class land, uh, landowners um, back in the day. Um, his two main interests were science and mathematics. And he is uh, uh, he's the father of Blaise Pascal. Um, and he was the first uh, to study the Limousin. Uh, this curve is also referred to uh, by his name. Uh, the next gentleman that we're gonna, I'm going to talk to you about is uh, Albrecht Durer. Uh, he's a talented engraver, painter, and mathematician. Uh, I'll show you a few of his paintings. Uh, some of you might recognize them. Because uh, he's har uh, highly artistic. Uh, one of the things that he did was he made a self-portrait at the age of 13. Uh, he also wrote a book. Uh, it's the four books of measurements. And the topics included geometry, architecture, engineering, and topography. Um, and this this book also contained drawings of the curve. That's why he should be uh, given the credit for the curve. Uh, and he also wrote the book, uh, or the four books on human proportion. Here are uh, two of his most known paintings. I I think because I recognize these. Uh, on the right is the praying hands, and on the left is the adoration of the Trinity. And then the last guy that we're going to talk about is uh, Gilles de Roberval. Uh, he's a French mathematician uh, who made advances in the geometry of curves. Uh, he became a professor in mathematics at the College of France in Paris in 1632. And uh, he studied and improved the methods for indivisibilities. Uh, he also discovered the general method uh, of drawing tangents. Um, here are some of the uh, some of nature's pedal curves. Here you can see the snail, like what the uh, curve is, the limousin is named after. Um, and then along with uh, shells, other shells, flowers, and uh, galaxies. And then here here are some. Uh, modern applications, uh, one of which is the harp. You can see uh, some curves based off of the overall shape. And then here you could also see, uh, although it is a pedal, uh, you could also see it, it creates a pedal, like four petals of a flower. Um, now we're going to talk about the mathematics behind the pedal curve. 
Um, let me begin with uh, talking about the evolutes and involutes. The evolutes are a locus of centers of the envelope of a plane curves normal. Uh, this essentially means it's the original curve. And then the involute is the roulette of a selected point on a line uh, that has a tangent along the given curve. Um, and this, produce, this curve uh, produces the evolute. Um, now I'm going to show you, this is the uh, evolute. And now we're going to talk about uh, the limousine and polar form. And I'm going to hand it over to Ab. All right, uh, hello guys. So as you guys can see, uh, this is the general form of the equation of a limousine. So I'm sure by now you guys are like, well, what does a limousine look like? The answer is, based on that equation, I don't know yet. And the reason is, um, the graph like varies uh, depending on the ratio of A to B. So I'm gonna show you guys a quick animation so you guys gonna know what I'm talking about. All right, so as you guys can see, as the value of A to B changes, so does the graph. So, um, let me go back to the slide. Okay, so as you guys can see, if the value of A equals to the value of B, we end up with something called the cardioid, which kind of have like a heart shape. And if the value of B is greater than the value of A, we end up with something called an inner loop. Okay, so guys, this is an example of an inner loop. So um, the equation basically, as you guys can see, A is equal to two and B is equal to four. So it is basically G of theta equals to two plus four cosine of theta. And also this is like a, an example of a cardioid. As you guys can see, a is equal to 2 and B equals to 1.99 and which is approximately 2. So we can basically say A and B are uh, approximately the same. So, okay. So now, okay, how do I convert, how do I go from a polar form to a Cartesian form? All right, guys. So I'm going to show you real quick on the board how to do that. Well, so the polar form of the equation we did have. So guys, we're going to work with the general form, which is equals to R equals to B plus A cosine of theta. Well, as you guys saw in the previous slides, uh, sorry about that. I'll show you the previous slide real quick. So as you guys can see here, this example, I have like cosine of theta. So what does a cosine do is the graph is gonna open on the x axis. So if that was like a sine theta, it, it was gonna, it's gonna open on the y axis. So that's, that's the only thing. So basically uh, for this specific example, I'm gonna work with cosine theta. Okay, so, oops. Okay, so what I need to know is uh, r to the second power is equals to x to the second power plus y to the second power. And also the second thing I need to know is x is equals to r cosine theta. I'm sure it rings a bell, guy. What It rings a bell. Okay, so what is cosine theta equals to? Adjacent over r, which is the hypotenuse. We can just call it that. Okay, so for this, um, for this case, um, I want to convert from polar to Cartesian. So if I give you the equation like R 
equal to b plus a cosine theta you guys are like gonna be ah are you kidding me how am i gonna graph this thing well so we are familiar with graphing like graphs like y equals to let's say for example y oops sorry about that y equals to f of x so basically what do i have to do we write it in that form as simple as that okay so so let's go back to our specific example okay so the polar form is uh, r equals to b plus a cosine of theta okay so i'm sure you guys know that uh, R to the, if I use, if I want to like rewrite it in terms of x and y, um, I'm going to have to use this formula right here. R to the second power equals to x to the second power plus y to the second power. Because guys, I know um, R to the second power is, I know x equals to R cosine theta. Give me guys one second, I'll show you why. So guys, uh, I, I wrote uh, this, uh, this equation right here because I'm sure you guys know the cosine squared of theta plus sine squared of theta is equals to 1. So, so that's why, guys, I want to work with numbers that are, square, that are squared. So that was the point I was trying to make. Okay, so now enough talking, guys. Let me show you how to do this thing. Okay. So the equation is this one, r equals to b plus a cosine of theta. So since, uh, since I showed you guys you want to work with numbers that are squared, so what am I going to do? I want to have r to the second power right here. And how do I do it? All I need to do is multiply by r to both sides. And I'm not going to change it, so it's going to be basically the same. So when I do that, I end up with r times, oops, sorry about that, let me rewrite it here end up with r times r which is equals to r times b plus a cosine of theta okay now i'm going to multiply i'm going to end up with r to the second power which is equals to r b plus a r cosine of theta well great so i see an r squared here and remember guys our goal is to to like rewrite it in a form that we recognize, meaning using x and y. And here, as you guys can see, yay, r to the second power, x to the second power plus y to the second power. What do I do? Just substitute. So uh, I'm gonna have here x to the second power plus y to the second power, which is equals to r times b plus well, I'm sure now you guys are going to be like, well, a r to the cosine theta. Here I have, on, I have r to the second power. I can do r equal to the square root of x to the second power plus y to the second power. But I'm going to be like, guys, wait a second. What else can I, what else do I see here? Well, I see, um, I see an a r, I see an r cosine theta right here. Oops, sorry about that. I forgot to write one, uh, one, oh no, no, I did not forget. Never mind. that's right here. That's exactly what I was looking for. Do you guys see r cosine theta is equals to x? And I want to rewrite it in terms of x and y. So all I do is replace r cosine theta with x. So I end up having All right, sounds good. But what, what else do you guys see? An R. And guys, I want to work with Y and X, as I told you earlier. And you guys see here, R to the second power is equal to X to the second power plus Y to the second power. So what do I do? 
so I take the square root of both sides so let me write it here so the square root of r to the second power equals to the square root of x to the second power plus y to the second power so the square is going to basically cancel the square root so I'm going to end up with r equals to the square root of x to the second power plus y to the second power and I'm going to substitute that for r guys So basically guys that's it I converted it well if you want we can just like rewrite it bring the axes in one side all together factor the b out but it is basically the same expression right here so, okay let's move on to the next slide well okay so how do I graph this specific graph when uh, I give a and b a specific value and in this case uh, I'm gonna give a the value of 2 and b the value of 4 and since b is greater than a, so I'm going to end up with an inner loop. So basically, if I want to convert it, I'm going to do the same thing. So I don't want to bore you guys to that. So, all right. So let me show you how to graph that real quick. Uh, it's going to be time consuming. So I'm not going to like uh, plot every single point, but I'm going to give you guys a general idea of how it works. All right, so the equation we have uh, is g of x, or in this case, to make it simpler, I can just call g of x r equals to 2 plus 4 cosine of theta. Okay, so as you guys can see in this graph, um, I have to... I'm use I'm like uh, working with a cosine function. So meaning what I need to do is plugging angles. So in this case, let's say for example, I'm gonna say theta equal to zero. Because uh, the domain of this uh, limousine is gonna be from zero to two pi. Okay, so I'm gonna say, let's say theta is equals to zero. So when theta is equal to zero, what is the cosine of zero? It is one. So I'm going to say, okay, when theta is equal to zero, I'm going to say cosine is equal to one. So here, so now I want to find the value of r. So since uh, the cosine at zero is going to be one, so r is going to be equal to two plus four times one, which is just going to be equal to two plus four which is going to be equals to 6. Um, hold on, give me one second, guys. I want to see what's going on here. Oh, sorry, sorry. When I say theta is equal to 0, it is also at 2 pi also, cosine of 2 pi also. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, cosine of 2 pi also is equal to 1. That is the same thing. So as you guys can see, so I'm going to keep counting. This is, it jumps by 2. So since the radius is going to be, uh, which is r, which is going to be 6, so meaning if I uh, go, it's going to be 2, 4, and I go 1, 2, 3, 4, because jumping by 4, 6. So meaning our first point is going to be at r equal to 6, because, guys, every circle is r equals to, in this case, let's say, that's because of, uh, how can I say, the scale I used. So in this case, I'm going to say 1, 2, 3, 4. So every 4 circle is going to be 1, r equals to 1. So in this case, I'm going to be at r equal to 6, it's going to be right here. And, uh, and cosine of 2 pi also is going to be right here. That's the angle, depending on like uh, which line, what I, how I an annotate it. So, all right, let's move on to the next slide because I'm running out of time, guys. So, okay, so basically from polar to parametric, uh, since I'm running out of time, so I'm going to go quickly over it. So basically, this is a polar form, and this is a parametric form. And this is how we're excited. So thank you very much for your time, guys.